In this video, I wanna show you how I automate submitting URLs to Google. Now, here's the problem I was trying to solve, and this is probably kind of a niche problem, but I'm sure there's um, this applies to other things as well. So I have this website that I built called Match My Paint Color, and this is actually for UK companies. Um, and it's so all these UK paint companies, and basically you can look for um, a color, you know, let's just say some sort of like red, and maybe you're looking for this uh, Faro and Balls Lake Red, and you want to see, hey, what are the other major paint manufacturers around me? What are, what are their colors? And you can come in here and click compare them, do the background, blah, blah, blah. That's not the point. The point is, is that I have this website, and it's got, it's got I, I don't know, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 pages. So I made this a few months ago, and I submitted it to Google, but they didn't index all the pages. So if I come over here to my coverage, I can see that um, um, they've indexed uh, 1,460 of them, but they've excluded, you know, what is this? Like 80 some percent of the pages. Now, that's not because of some sort of technical thing. Um, I think it happens, because I've seen, I've, this has happened to me before, is that when you have just like a lot of pages and they're similar, because this is, you know, the, the similar pages that Google's kind of like, hey, you know, like what's going on? But what, what happens if we look at like the validity chart here is that it's slowly growing over time. Okay, so, and you can see that they index more and more and more and more and more. So they're just kind of like, hey, chill out. Yeah, we want to see what this is all about. It seems suspicious to us, Google, right? Well, I have found with experience that the one way you can speed this up is by manually submitting your um, your 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 pages. Um, so obviously, you can like submit my site map, which is what I originally did, which you what you should do, what they recommend. But also, you can manually submit up to ten URLs every day, which will bump them up in the crawling queue, right? So they've got like a queue, like a line of, um, of web pages that are gonna crawl. And then if you submit it, you get sort of like bumped up in that, okay? So, and I found that when I do this, they actually get indexed quicker. So, but I've got 5,000, you know, 5,200 of these to go and I don't wanna go through and uh, do this every day because it becomes a little bit time intensive, as I'll show you. Um, so if I go over to this URL inspection here, um, uh, I can like submit a URL. Well, actually, no. Here's 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 what we do. I'll show you what I I normally do before I automated it. I would come over to my excluded here, and I would just come over to let's say this discovered but not currently indexed. And then I would sit and I would come over here and essentially I'll show you what I have to do. I click on here, then I click on inspect. It thinks for a little bit, it goes to this page and then I could click um, request indexing. And this is gonna go for a minute or two. And then when it's done, um, it'll say, hey, I'm done. And then I have to go back to that page and select another um, uh, web page, and so that's just kind of annoying. If <laughs> if I'm looking for it, I'm like, and it only allows me to do ten a day, and so you know I'm doing this <laughs> statistically for, a, you know, I don't know, a year and a half, and I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to do that. Um, so um, I automated this, and I want to show you how. Um, I I used uh, uh, this app, and I'll leave the creator of this app his uh, his Twitter handle I think is DK the Human. I'll leave this posted here, and it's called Browser Flow, and it's just a ba it's like a great um, Chrome extension automation uh, app, really easy to use, really well done. But let me show you how I do it. So I had a flow here called Request Indexation, and um, and I'm going to come back to this, but all this stuff is like wrapped in a loop. So what happens when you use this, like you'll open up with a blank one and then you just like press a, a plus here and you have all of these different, you know, actions that you can perform. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, let me know if you'd like to see a fuller tutorial on this, but um, you, you know, you can just go through and click. And so I'm going to show you what I set up here. I'm not going to go through it because I would just take a little bit longer than I think is necessary. But um, so essentially we've got this loop here. Let me come back. And that's just because like I'm going to go through this like a number of times, right? Because I can submit 10 a day. So I want to do this course of action 10 times. 
Okay. So the first thing I do is, you know, I'm just going to visit my URL. That's just a simple, you dump in like where you want to go, where you want to start. And that's where we're starting from. The next thing is wait for an element. So what you want to do for like automations um, and some like, like auto wait. So like, I'm not sure what browser flow is built on. The two main like engines that people use nowadays to do this are called Playwright and Puppeteer. Um, those are those are JavaScript like automation libraries or testing libraries. Um, and I know uh, like both of them at this point have like auto waiting. So you don't have to do this kind of thing where you're like, you're like always waiting for the thing to appear. Um, but I've, I, but I found that you have to do this at least at this point. Uh, maybe, maybe he'll, um, update it. But, um, so I go to this URL, I wait for this element. What element is it? Well, it's, it's going to be like this thing. Cause when I'm going to select, you're going to be waiting for whatever thing, whatever your next action is. So we know, like I said before, I'm going to click on this. And so I'm waiting for that to, uh, to, be there and interactable, right? And so I'm waiting for the, I'm waiting for this element. So whatever you're going to click on next, you want to just like dump a wait in front of the clicking um, or probably your script is going to break at some point um, just because of like network speeds and blah, blah, blah. And you probably know all that. Okay. So, um, so I know that I need to click on this. Well, like, how did I know this? Well, you just, you know, open up your console. This is one way to do it. And you just like grab the thing, right? And then you, I, I could do that. And of course, you know, like it, like the thing. So this row right here, this contains a bunch of DOM elements. And so presumably you could get any of these things. But the thing you want to think about in terms of automation is what thing do I want to like interact with that is going to be the most consistent thing that I can rely upon? And so... If you do something like down, like way in here, so, you know, like if I were to click like that guy right there, right? So this little span, this like NA span. Well, first of all, like, like this is probably going to change, you know, maybe they'll turn a span into a paragraph, you know, stuff like that where you're like, like it, there's more probability that when Google designs this pages, this thing's going to change. So you want to think, okay, like what's like a good old fashioned consistent DOM selector that's going to do it. Um, the, the other thing is you want to think about like what classes you're selecting or like IDs or whatever it is. Right. And you want to, you, you want to be like, you know, <laughs> what, what looks like a class that's going to like stick around for a while. And what I mean by that is like when you see these classes name here, like this is gibberish. Now, I'm sure it's not gibberish when they wrote it. The, like I'm sure this web page, you know, it's probably like Angular is probably um, dumped through like a build tool that like sort of scrambles these. Um, why? Probably to like <laughs> try to avoid automation, like precisely the thing we're doing. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. So probably they're, they're probably semantic. Like when when the designers are actually doing it, this probably gets dumped through a build process. Now, um, so like typically you're going to want to try to avoid these kind of like these kind of like garbage classes because they probably get re-rendered every time you visit the website or regenerated um, from some sort of like build tool. So they're probably not consistent is my guess. And so you want something that's sort of like more stable. Sometimes you have to rely on that, that's fine. Of course you can come in here, you can like a right click and you can say copy selector and that's gonna give you one selector, but it might, and, and you can try that and it's totally fine and sometimes it works. Um, um, but I want to look for something like more consistent. So here, if you see, like I've, I was like, okay, so like, I want to like look inside this table. Cause that table is like not going to change. There's always going to be kind of like a table there. Right. Um, with this class, it just has one class. Maybe it's auto generate. I don't know, but it's, it's worked out thus, thus far. And then I'm doing this like data attribute selection, this data row zero, which is right here, because in my mind, like that's something like normal and semantic that's like not going to change right like oh this the, the first row the zeroth row um and <laughs> like data row id equals zero it's like yeah that's probably going to stay the same because it's like really semantic it like makes sense it means something 
Um, you can verify, click over here, and it's gonna show you what you selected. I think because my console is open, it's not liking that. Um, uh, um, uh, norm normally, normally it like pops up. Let me let me try to let's try to close this out for a second to get this to actually show you how this works. Um, so into my action here, let's wait for element. Let's verify. Oh, it's not running. So we'll so we'll see. It will make sure it should work. But some when you class verify normally, it'll like highlight the DOM selection. Okay. The other way you can select stuff is you can just press the select thing, and it'll go over and it'll kind of like look for whatever selection you want and it'll auto fill it in there. That's like a super easy way. Okay. So we're waiting for this first element. Once it appears, then we're gonna click on it. This is the same. Uh, selection as up here, right? Because we're waiting and then interacting. So normally waiting, clicking, waiting, clicking, waiting, clicking. So we're doing the same thing again. We're waiting, we're clicking. We've already seen this stuff. We're waiting, we're clicking. Um, and then on that last page, that last pop-up that occurred, I'm waiting for that to pop up and then we're gonna jump to, jump into our, our like loop, right? So, um, <clears throat> and what this is, is you can come in here and you can just see like uh, control flow and you can see there's a bunch of different types of loops. So for instance, a really cool thing um, is that you can hook this up to a Google sheet really easily and like pull variables from there. So, so you can like loop through a bunch of like stuff in your, um, uh, in your Google sheet, right? Um, I'm just doing like a simple loop that just loops it like X number of times. And I know like I can do this, um, uh, 10 times. And so, um, you know, every day, that's what I'm going to set it to, right? So I'm just going to show you it a couple times right now. Um, but so let's just, you know, set it to like four times or something. Um, and, uh, and what happens when you when you start loop, I'll just show you what the loop looks like when I dump it in here. So I, I do, I do this loop, and I just get these two like node things. And then when you dump stuff inside here, so let's just like, say, like, click, right? Um, it's going to like auto indent so you can see like the hierarchical relationship. This is like a inside the loop, right? Um, okay, so let's delete these right here. And we got our loop here and we can just run this and you can see how this works. So let's go. So we're going to the page, we're waiting, we're clicking, it's waiting, clicking, we're testing the URL. And remember, we're, this is where we're waiting for the last pop-up after it's accepted um, uh, the indexing. So it got it, it recognized it, and we're on to the next flow. Okay, um, so that is uh, how this works, guys. Let me know if uh, you've used it or if you have any questions about it. It's a really, really awesome tool. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Actually, remembered one other thing I wanted to show you was that you can run this in a cloud and you can run this on a schedule. So I've come into my account right here. And if I go to my dashboard, I've got this... Um, run right here and uh, I click on it. That's just like the flow I've done. And you can see I can do it on a schedule um, and uh, which is which is uh, really helpful. So you don't even actually have to think about it, right? Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys later.